This is just going to be a quick video on something called contemplative prayer or what they call listening prayer. It's been made popular again uh, partly by the IHOP movement and also a book called uh, Jesus Calling. Uh, Jesus, in Jesus Calling, she, the author, uh, Sarah Young, says that she is tired of having her prayer being a monologue and she wants it to be a dialogue. And she goes through this exercise where she believes that she just needs to sit and listen and hear the voice of God and clear her mind, which is what contemplative prayer is. It's to clear your mind and to seek and hear the voice of God. Or as well, it's a repeating of a word over and over and over again. Well, whenever someone says that they're hearing the voice of God audibly, that sometimes can get dangerously close to bearing false witness to what God is saying. you got to ask the question, how do you know what you're hearing is what God is saying? And in her book, Jesus Calling Sarah, Sarah Young says, well, I, I, I embrace the inerrancy and inspiration of scriptures. And on her first day, January 20, uh, January 1st, she actually distorts uh, one of the passages, Jeremiah 29, verse 11, to say something that it is not saying. She also misquotes G.I. Packer's quote of Martin Luther on, in forcing what she really says is Martin Luther believes in contemplative prayer, which he did not. And she uh, takes that quote out of context as well with Martin Luther in her introduction. But I want to ask the question, how do I know I'm hearing the voice of God? The first thing is that you would know that the voice of God would never contradict Scripture. If you're hearing something that contradicts clear Scripture teaching, you can definitely say it's not the voice of God. But I ask the question, why do we need to hear God in such an audible, audible way when He's clearly left us everything we need in the Word of God? 2 Timothy 3.16 the word of God is left for us so that the man of God or the person of God may be fully equipped. So with the scriptures, we're already fully equipped with what everything we need to know about salvation, everything we need to know about the Christian life. We are already fully equipped. As well, another passage, is a passage of scripture I thought of was Psalm 119. In Psalm 119, every single verse is about the word of God. And I just thought about a couple. Instead of there sitting in silence, clearing your mind, which is actually very new age, how about storing the word of God into your mind, into your heart? Because that is how God primarily speaks to us. But listen how, the, how David heard the voice of God. Psalm 119 verse 10, With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commands. Psalm 119, verse 11. I have stored your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Psalm 119, verse 15. I will meditate on your precepts. He's, David's not thinking about nothing. He's thinking about the word of God, the precepts of God. And fix my eyes on your ways. In Psalm 115, verse 23. Even though princes sit plotting against me, your servant will meditate on your statues. These books get all very bizarre because they're bringing in fads that are not biblical. I have a book that you should be radically passionate about if you're a follower of Christ. It's the Bible. Learn it, study it, read it, think about it, store it into your heart, continue to uh, fill your mind with the Word of God, read it, Study it, talk about it, share it with your family. That's how you're going to hear the voice of God. Not by sitting in some silence waiting for some voice to come to you. Get into the Word. God has already given us everything we need to know. You want to know what the will of God is for your life? It's found in the book, the Holy Bible. And so stay away from these bizarre New Age gimmicks. But get back to what God says, how He speaks to us through his word. Amen.